been a while since we reacted to a bit of Quasquazart, so I thought, screw it, let's react to a bit of Quasquazart. So now, for example, can you upload your mind and live forever? It's a good question. If possible, can I do it? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get straight into the video and see what it's all about. And away we go. The desire to be free from the limits of the human experience is as old as our first stories. We exist in an really? endless universe, only bound by the laws of physics, and yet our consciousness is trapped in mortal machines made of meat. Flesh. With the breathtaking explosion of innovation and progress, for the first time, the concept of leaving our flesh piles behind and uploading our minds into a digital utopia no seems shot. possible. No Even like shot. the logical next step on our evolutionary ladder. Mind uploading and digital I immortality are some of the though, core right? themes of the game Cyberpunk 2077. That it flops, plays in a grim dystopian future where humanity yep. has progressed far beyond today's technology and explores what this could mean for humanity. About a year ago, CD Projekt Red asked us if we would like to make a video about some of these ideas and we were oh, really? immediately on board. So, like, let's explore this topic together. Is it wow, possible to upload was... your mind into a computer? Well, it's complicated. I don't think now. Maybe in the future. Bum, bum, bum. It's a weird concept, Upload isn't it? what exactly? Mind is one of those words that are really hard to define. It's thought to be yeah. the collective abilities of your consciousness and intelligence. Knowledge, the thing that right? lets you imagine, recognize, and dream. Yeah. Mind uploading is the hypothetical concept of making a copy of this inner world and transferring it into a computer to run a simulation of your consciousness. But it wouldn't be you, but would it? It'd be a copy the of you. Defining the premise gets really hard, really yeah. fast. It would be like a. The possibility a clone of mind uploading of is based on three assumptions. Assumption one: your mind is in your brain's structure, arrangement, and biochemistry. Yeah. The idea that everything about the mind can be found in the brain is called physicalism and it keeps our discussion within the domain of natural law. Yeah. Assumption 2. At some point, we will understand the brain well enough and possess the technology to simulate all of its aspects to make a digital mind copy. That's crazy. Assumption yeah, but it's a copy, three, right? Yeah. Computer software can host your mind, which means the mind is computer. Would it true? Like I said, would it truly be? It's just literally a clone of you. It's not even you. It's it is you, but it's not. So are you really going to be a mortal? Because it's not even you. Because your physical body and your physical brain will die. Oh. Beautiful. Deep. There is no physical property in the brain, including consciousness, that cannot be simulated accurately, even if it requires a lot of code. All of these assumptions have been proposed and challenged by scientists and philosophers and they remain the subject of passionate debate. With so many fundamental questions still unanswered, it's hard to discuss the topic without annoying someone. Whatever your position, every discussion of mind upload has to begin with the brain. The brain in a nutshell. <laughs> the brain nice, okay. is the most complex biological structure known and deserves its own entire video. So let's just take a brief look at it. Okay. Around 100 billion neurons are communicating via 1 million billion connections that are sending signals up to 1,000 times each second, which is one quadrillion events every second of your waking life. For sure. And for it's sure. not just neurons, there are billions of supporting and immune cells of various types performing different jobs. On a macro level, the brain can be divided into sections with different roles, from breathing and heart rate to coordinating movement and mm. involuntary mm. reflexes. The most developed parts, the neocortex or the outermost layer of the brain, hold memories, our ability to plan, think and imagine, hope and dream. The Where neocortex exactly is what the we would need to the brain is situated copy. is not entirely clear. Oh. <laughs> we know that areas I it was like clear. the precuneus cortex have the greatest influence on our consciousness, but also that several areas can network together to share tasks none of them can do alone. The brain's building blocks are not exactly simple either. Neurons are not just wires, they alter and process information. Synapses, where signals are handed over from one neuron to the next, contain receptors for hundreds of chemical signals, opening them up to outside influence. We have a basic understanding of how these work, 
and we can accurately predict their behavior at small scales, but there's a lot more to the brain than just nerve signals. Hormones play a huge role, like serotonin, Curious. which affects our mood, or Happiness. histamine, which helps us learn. The brain is influenced by our other parts too, more like from heart stuff. nerves to gut bacteria. <laughs> what seemed like a very complicated system to begin with gets even more complicated the more we learn about it. To get this wildly interconnected mess of cells and meat and chemicals into a computer, we need a model that we can simulate in our digital world. Some sort of scan. Unfortunately, okay. our scanning technology, like fMRI machines, is not nearly good enough to attempt such a thing. But there oh, is a okay. different method that seems very promising. Cutting a brain into tiny slices and scanning them with a high-resolution electron microscope what? to create an accurate map of all the cells and connections. And in 3D printing, what would you do with it? Scientists successfully mapped a cubic millimeter of mouse brain, roughly the size of a big grain of sand. Okay. It contained 100,000 neurons with a billion synapses and four kilometers of nerve fibers. What did they achieve from it, though? That's the question. This grain of brain was cut into 25,000 slices. Yeah. Five electron microscopes ran continuously for five months, collecting more than 100 million images. Of course, It took yep. three months to assemble the images into a 3D model. The yeah, completed data set fills up model. two million gigabytes of cloud storage. Jesus to scan Christ, okay. a whole human brain, we would have to repeat this effort a million times, which so is much easier said than done. We need better hard even drives. worse, <laughs> to correctly simulate a brain, we might even have to map out much smaller building blocks to include the billions of underlying proteins or even individual molecules that cause all the behaviors we see at the cellular level, which might produce more data than the capacity of all data storage on Earth. Right. Brain water to consciousness wine. While all of these issues are annoying, the real question is how we turn the static blueprint of the brain into an active thing. Even if we have a scan, down to the level of synapses, we need laws and rules that animate the wiring diagram to endow this static structure with life, update it with the various laws of chemical binding, of electrodynamics, to animate the simulation. So it becomes a dynamic, active thing like a brain that exists from one mind. Isn't that just creating AI? Even though it was someone else that was living, but they've been put in a machine. Technically, isn't that just artificial intelligence? Per second to the next, that could evolve in time, think, see, and act. The reality is that we just don't know if this is possible to achieve. If our technology can give rise to real minds, it all hinges on the nature of the problem. Okay. Are the brain and mind just complicated and a lot of work to figure out? Or are they complex in a way that we can't solve? In the worst case, consciousness is more than the sum of the parts of the brain in a way that we don't realize yet. Complex in a way that we can't solve by getting better scans. Mm. Just having a list of the ingredients might not be enough to get a good consciousness cake. Right now, we have a great starting point with tangible scientific results and an end goal, but the road to true simulation is unclear and requires a lot of innovation and research. Humans have historically been horrible at predicting the pace of progress. In the best case, <laughs> it's just a matter of doing the work and finding the right solutions. It might not be necessary to simulate every last cell down to the last atom. Instead, it may be possible to simplify elements into probabilistic models that could match the behavior of the brain using a more manageable number of simpler systems. Okay. So we really don't know if we will ever understand our brain and consciousness well enough to upload human minds. But the science is real and worth pursuing. At the very least, we will just learn a lot about ourselves and develop a bunch of new technologies. Speed if sleep. we succeed, what? this might put mind Let's uploading go. well within the capabilities of our rapidly progressing computer technology. The consequences for humanity and our future in this universe are vast, creepy, and amazing. True. The copy. That's Successful it's mind it's uploading copy. is functional immortality. Unless hmm. damaged or deleted, you will continue to exist as long as a copy is stored somewhere. Of course, if the scan is corrupted in any of a myriad of ways, your mind might get corrupted too. You yeah, might be say, in like, an eternity of pain or paranoia or having an endless psychotic breakdown. 
The question if this digital mind is you opens another whole can of worms. We For now, we'll just there assume we that your digital mind at least feels like it's you. Yeah. How would mind uploading change your outlook on life? Will you feel no, safer time, knowing that death is not necessarily the end? Or would you try to be super safe to avoid dying before your mind is uploaded? If scanning technology does become advanced enough, your biological and digital versions could coexist. Yeah. You could help each other out by making your Dude, biological sick. lifespan more enjoyable and the future of the copy more secure. Whatever happens, your mind copy will begin a completely new life once it opens their digital eyes for the first time. Having a functional body is actually quite nice and you're pretty used to it. Food, love, pain and exhaustion, all of these things are parts of us that we must to, uh, live with. But in the end, they, they are the result it, right? of neurons firing in your brain. So while you could decide to live in a simulated body, it might be optional for a digital mind. Falling in love might lose meaning if you can have it at the press of a button. Instead, Ooh. you might end up searching for new extraordinary experiences. Walk on the I'm surface saying, of the sun. AI, bro, gonna... Speed up time to skip past a few boring months. Why would you do that? Experience a simulation. If you've ever watched a movie click, you know you don't. Do of the past. Your perspectives and priorities will change as you continue to exist in this liberated form. The longer digital minds exist, eventually they will likely gain greater knowledge of themselves and an ability to change their own contents. This can be as simple as deleting a memory that bugs you. You might change aspects of your personality, like grudges, addictions, or laziness. Without the constraints of biology, your abilities might You're move up about as technology right progresses, while your priorities or goals might become more and more foreign to your original brain if it's still alive. Waking up to the true potential of digital immortality will be gradual. You can start projects that would take more than a lifetime to complete. Scientists could accumulate an incredible amount of knowledge, leading to discoveries that could revolutionize the world. Adventurers could upload themselves onto small spaceships and embark on journeys to the stars, just putting themselves on pause for thousands of years at a time. Jesus Although it's unlikely that every digital mind will work for the benefit of humanity, yeah. since our current meat versions don't do that either. Some will seek power and influence and will have a literal eternity of trying to create empires. It's actually dangerous. Others will begin hoarding as many resources for themselves as possible as they compete with other minds trying to do the same. The longer they live, the less sympathy they may feel for simple meat beings. Yeah. Or imagine immortal That's cult leaders too. who propagate lies and invent religions, fine-tuning and perfecting their dogma over hundreds of years. Or perhaps... Hey, dogma. Hold on fine-tuning and perfecting their dogma over hundreds of years. Dogma. Or perhaps none of all that. Maybe our minds are not made for immortality, and digital minds will just become best, rigid and unproductive and yeah. retire after a very long life, we'll having retire, experienced take everything over. they could ever want to. It's hard to predict how much good or bad a self-improving mind could do with hundreds or thousands of years of free time. I wouldn't trust my AI self to have that While power. While mind upload with all, all its wonders and horrors is beyond our current technological capabilities, you can use some of your free time in the present and experience one interpretation of this future right. My mom would probably just watch every series on the world, over, like back to forward, <laughs> like just waste all the time. <laughs> away by hitting the streets of Night City in Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, they're actually sponsored. Cyberpunk 2077 is made by CD Projekt Red, was, um, the studio that brought us the Witcher series a they're bringing and is back one of the flop. most eagerly awaited games of it. the last few years. You okay dive again. into a dark, dystopian Don't future where console. incredible technology is redefining who and what we are. You can become part of this stunningly large world with a... And if you do buy this on console, get it on uh, next gen. Don't get it on. Immersive storytelling. Here's the thing: we haven't played the game yet, but when you see this video, we're probably already doing so. If the past work of CD Projekt Red is any indication, then this will be an amazing game, which is why we did this collaboration and sat on this video for far too long. So if it's made you curious, check it out. Oh God, that's not age well. That did not age well. But that was.
It was an okay game for PC, but do be careful if you're going on console. Anyway, good video. Okay, everyone, that is the end of the video. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you check out the original in the description down below. Want to watch more videos? There is a YouTube suggested one right there. If you want to watch the most recent video, that would be up there. I will see you in the next video. Ooh, later.